I hope there are a lot of interesting questions. Jan Rekwatsky from the GTS Foundation. I have been a local politician at Lidinge in Stockholm, and there we plan to build a tunnel which will cost every citizen on Lidinge about 10,000 crowns in investment. And that would shorten the journey, triple journeys each day for about 10,000 people with four minutes, this thing which would cost them 10,000 crowns per person. Now I listen to you all, and uh, in, as I gather in Uppsala, uh, you would pay something like, well, in both cities actually, when you plan in both Södertälje and Uppsala, you would pay something like uh, 4,000 crowns for these systems per person, yeah, as an investment, if you calculate per person. How come that a tunnel can be considered, it was not built, it, it has not been built yet, but it was considered anyhow, seriously, for just a small, small fraction of the persons at that price, 10,000, whereas these networks that would be so beneficial for so many people cannot be considered, as they cost less than half of what our tunnel would cost. Thank you. Do you understand the question? Shall I rephrase it? Yeah. I thought you answered You probably didn't you understand the question. I think that you answered it yourself. Uh, <laughs> it's not reasonable with that kind of investment when we have better alternatives. Uh, in Södertälje we don't plan the tunnel, but we hope that we will have the podcast system. questions for those who didn't hear it was how long can we wait and it's a very good question of course from from a planner's perspective we still maintain our day-to-day -day planning of, of new new uh, new building uh, building enclaves or, or new areas and we want to listen to to the public transport association to cooperate and see what uh, what bus lines can we improve and where could we build bus lanes and uh, where could we implement uh, parking fees because uh, until until recently we haven't had any parking fees in all of Vespit so it still goes on but we really don't have that big like this solution so so uh, if this is a good good solution I don't know yet so we have to wait and find out but I guess we can't wait for too long because it's really getting crowded at some of the, the main uh, main approaches, the main roads in, in Vespi. So I don't know really how long we could wait, but I, I think we have one or two years anyways. Maybe four or five years. If we don't do nothing in four or five years, we will have very big problems. But that's also the same matter as of the building more roads to, to fix congestion, we will just get more cars. So we need to have like a PRT kind of solution, that one that uh, completely changes how, how we look at transportation or how we use our transportation. Mm -hmm. Yes? I'm done a bit thinking of your question. <laughs> You have to consider the alternative as well. You know, in, we have to double the number of journeys in 10 years. And, and the alternative is to, to buy more buses, for example, or, or widen the streets, uh, or do anything to, to get them through the city. In Uppsala, if you do nothing and just accept that the traffic increases, 
have to build a tunnel <laughs> to, to take the traffic around. And, and that, that's about two, three, four hundred million euros. So you have to consider the total alternatives as well. And, and one more thing, I like to, to do the calculations and see what, what are the costs per journey. More than it's what is the investment cost as a total. Uh, Peter Lovering from Composite Solutions UK. Um, I was interested in the uh, comparison of costs that uh, Tom gave earlier on. I mean, just a hypothetical question to start with is um, if you were to go to the government and say we want to build a tram system, which you indicated you're paying 50% subsidy for, and it's far more expensive than a uh, podcast system, would the government be more willing to, uh, to fund that sort of enterprise? Um, but I'd also be interested in uh, a, a, a more detailed comparison of costs if you've got it in terms of buses, trams and podcasts as you see it in, in, this, in operating costs. Well, but the first question some politician would have been here to, to answer, but I, I think that when you, everybody knows that about the tram, they've seen it as a child and they like the tram, so I, I think it's more easy to uh, to get the tram, decision of a tram, because we know how to build it, we know the techniques and so on, so it's more easy perhaps uh, mentally to to get the decision through than this new technique. Uh, I think so, perhaps. Uh, the other question was comparing the, the different... Well, I, I forgot to say, one of the most important things with this project in Uppsala is we don't speak about a, a pilot project for a podcast system. We, we speak about a... As it, it is a it's included in the total, in the whole system of, of public transportation. It, it could be trams, buses and podcasts. So, so the interesting thing is to see the whole... You can't compare a podcast system in, in this area with 30,000 workplaces so close together uh, with a suburban area where we have buses. So of course it's more expensive. You have to look at the total of, of the, the combined system. It's, it's rather hard to compare them and then decide according to, the, to those calculations. You take that and not that. It, it depends on the way you do it and the circumstances around. Was it clear enough? <laughs> yeah, that's, that's fine. Thank you. More of a holistic point of view. Hi, I'm Ron Swenson uh, from California. Yeah. And I. Okay. So, um, I. Strange how this comes and goes. <laughs> anyway, I am concerned that um, the premise of greater congestion in the future. Uh, is predicated on the availability of fuels to run our existing system. And with the demands in India and China for, uh, you know, urbanizing, for going towards a, uh, a more uh, industrialized society, we're going to put demands on, on oil around the world. And, and it may be that uh, in the near future we have. Uh, I wonder if uh, you might comment on the, uh, the, the way that uh, you, you envision powering the uh, podcast systems and how they might compare the automobile in, in the future in that regard. Well, uh, in uh, Sweden we have uh, electricity production that mainly is based on hydropower and nuclear power. Uh, I don't think that podcasts will be a problem from that point of view because, uh, at least in the beginning, the electricity needed uh, could rather easily be fitted into the existing system. And we are also going to 
We have a lot of more wind power here in Sweden. So I think that's not a problem. But I agree completely that we have a problem with the fuel supply in the future. Although it is possible to convert um, carbon to uh, liquid uh, fuels, they do that already in South Africa and they are going to do that also in China. They are building a couple of uh, new <coughs> industries in China that will produce liquid uh, fuels from, from carbon. So uh, the climate change will hopefully uh, be so, so uh, uh, highly regarded as a problem that we don't do that in too much extent. But the, f the supply of fuel, I think that will be secure for a long time in the future using coal. I, I mentioned in, in my presentation not too much about climate change and, and CO2 emissions because uh, if you disregard energy efficiency and whether or not the, the, the power is generated by, by nuclear, nuclear power plants or hydroelectricity, we still have the, the issues of, of congestion and noise and, and land use. So even, even if we used uh, fossil fuels to, to, to generate the electricity, we would so still have some benefits from this <coughs> system. My name is Todor Stojanski from uh, Public, Trans uh, Public Transport Group at KTH, World Institute of Technology. So my question is, uh, did you do a kind of analysis uh, with what will uh, PRT, the podcast, will compete? Because we have a problem that we have lots of long trips coming in and these are pretty short lines. So in kind of a perspective, who wins? Like building a new tunnel can maybe save several kilometers on a deterred road, so it can save lots of kilometers by vehicles. Uh, did you do some kind of analysis? Will it compete with the cars? Will it compete with uh, local public transport? So, uh, did you do this kind of analysis in the any of the municipalities? Uh, our analysis was uh, was made uh, in in respect to to how many passengers who otherwise would have ridden buses. Uh, went over to using pod cars, or, or actually say calculating the demand and and supplying supplying the, the transportation via pod cars instead. So saying that maybe buses weren't no alternative. So if people had to use uh, pod cars, this would be the results in regards to to how many people traveling and volumes and, and the passengers. But I think your, the second part of your question was if you save any money in regards to, to road investments and road upkeep. And we didn't uh, think about that in our survey. As being part of working with public transport, uh, uh, it is, uh, when we find... Car is it... Is it kind of uh, lowering car use a uh, kind of incentive in all of these municipalities, for example, then seeing bus or exchanging. I think that you have to combine different measures. In Södertälje we are thinking about reducing the number of parking spaces in the city centre and uh, instead build park and ride uh, facilities outside the city centre, combine that with pod cars. Of course, with less parking spaces in the city centre, there will be less cars. <coughs> but uh, we are going to, if this is going to happen, we of course would like to replace uh, some of the existing bus lines with pod cars. So in that respect, we will also transfer people from buses to pod cars. Well, I have a guitar from Stockholm. I wonder if uh, any of you have. Uh, 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 thought about in uh, your know, planning to integrate your systems with uh, to promote a healthy lifestyle, to, for example, allowing bicycles to bring bicycles with the, with the vehicles to uh, proceed uh, from the stations uh, further on. Well, well, we haven't, uh, we're not ready in details, so we haven't designed the system yet, but. But, uh, for example, the vectors, uh, we have tested, you can take at least two bicycles in every car. So uh, I, th I, think, I think to take a bicycle on 
any kind of public transportation should be allowed. So hopefully. But you know, in the Uppsala we have, I don't know how many bicyclists we have, but I know we have 17,000 bicycle stamps. So at least about 20,000 people a day go by bicycles. So hopefully not all of them will go by the podcar, will cycle. My name is Thomas Heimo and I'm architect at WSP Analysis and Strategy and I have a question for Tom Carlson in Uppsala. I was curious how you are planning to finance the system. Is it publicly financed by the municipality or public private part? How do you plan? We, we have a, a very sharp signal from our politicians. Uh, they like this system, but they tell us we want you to finance it, not not by taxes, not not the investment by by the taxpayers' money. But of course, in the end, they have to pay it anyway. But uh, we're working on, on uh, uh, with the, with the landowners, with the property owners, with those who benefit from this system. We've, we're having talks with them. We're intending to, lie, to write down uh, letters of intent and, and finally, of course, uh, agreements. Uh, and then we, we are applying for a small contribution from the European Union uh, and then we are talking to the European, what is it called? European <coughs> Investment Bank and the Scandinavian Investment mm -hmm. Bank. So we have a lot of uh, of thinking how to finance it, but one thing is certain, not by uh, governmental money or, or local governmental money. Uh, will you do Will you do the same financing if it was uh, a streetcar or tram you were going to build? Would it be the same? I should have some of my politicians with me, I think. <laughs> they should answer that question. Um, as I said before, it, it sounds like it's more easy to, to get investment for, for a tram. But I'm not sure, actually. <coughs> so, uh, hello? Have you all made minds up? Have you all made your minds up that you're going to use vectors or will it be open to competition? Especially if you're using European money. No, of course not. We, we are, this, is, this must be a competition. We, 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 we can't uh, build a system that, that only one, one can continue to build. Of course it will be a competition. And, and I think it's tomorrow. One one of the, the sessions will be from the Royal Institute of Technology in Stockholm. They have a, a, a what is it called one project to take out procurement uh, for for better procurement for this kind of, of projects. So of course it, it's essential with a good competition in this. We have the same opinion in, in Solitaire, although this is a rather attractive system, but uh, of course we haven't decided to use uh, them. We would like to have an open competition with many good alternatives. Yeah, I'll, I'll that. I thought it was uh, interesting to hear about this uh, kind of fake podcar bus line in Solitaire. <laughs> I know you have some problems with the uh, anchorage with the public, and this might be a good solution. But I'm uh, curious: is it uh, financed by SL or is it financed by the municipality? It's uh, co-financing by SL and also Scania. They develop these buses, and uh, they are going to run uh, completely new kind of buses with. Uh, I don't know exactly the technology, but it's. I think it's going to be some kind of hybrid bus. And of course, we ourselves in the community are going to pay some part of it. Okay. 
And uh, with Uppsala, I'm kind of curious whether you have the architects in the, in the municipality with you. It's a very historic city center. <coughs> what do they say? Well, well I have uh, the chief of the, the building office. I don't know the English word for stats architect. The, the chief architect is, is with us. Okay. Because we don't, we'll, we, will do, we will not go into the absolute old city center. I don't think that would be very, very smart. Okay. Anybody else? We still have some time. Otherwise, I will thank you so very much. And I think we have some chocolate for you. <laughs> Thank you very much for your attention.